Hello, in this tutorial I'm trying to explain about how we can use the Bitbucket pipeline. Actually a lot of time I had problem with uh, using the Bitbucket pipeline so I thought maybe to make a tutorial for it and how we can use it and so on. Anyway, so I actually uh, had a project electric management system and uh, I thought maybe it's a good example to actually create a pipeline, Bitbucket pipeline for it and push it to the Bitbucket and see how we can actually set up a Bitbucket pipeline. So uh, in what, what actually is the Bitbucket pipeline and how it can be useful to us? I mean, Bitbucket pipeline is a way that you can uh, execute some codes into the pipeline so you can basically run for example your test or run or execute the swagger or run the php cs or code sniffer or anything like this something that basically you need to check before deploy to production so you will uh, be sure or double check that everything works uh, as expected anyway how uh, we can actually have a bitbucket pipeline or how uh, we can do it I mean, first of all, you need to create a file called bitbucketpipelines.yml or yam file. And then um, this file is actually starts with the keyword image. What is the image? Image is actually, um, how to say, is a Linux, for example, Linux machine that uh, you can install a lot of things on it. So PHP 7.4-PM is actually an image which if I pull it here, I mean, I, I have it, but I can show you what uh, is the image. Okay, so it is this one here. And if you actually uh, see, we are using uh, PHP 7.4 PM, which is the tag of it. And uh, I have actually created uh, a container from this image. And I'm now in the container. So you can see it's, it's, actually, uh, it's actually a Linux machine that uh, it has a PHP and that's it, nothing else. And then uh, after that, we have the pipelines keyword, which it starts with the default. And then the first step, which is the test, but it could be build test. It could be a build step anyway. We have a couple of other uh, commands here. You can see, for example, the caches, catch. The catch is actually a way when you have a couple of steps, you can use the catch to basically catch the uh, the composer. So you will not be needed to install the composer in every step because you know installing all of the packages takes some time. So you catch it and you will using this catch in the next steps. And then we have artifacts. Artifacts is somehow helps you to debug uh, the failed pipelines. So for example, your test is failing and you want to know what is the problem. So you will basically have the storage after all of your pipeline finish. So you will go to the storage and see, okay, I have this uh, storage and then I have the app and then the log. So I can go to the log and check what error I have. So it will store all of this folder for you for temporary for let's say, I mean, one week. So you can use it to debug your uh, pipelines. And then we have a script. The script is actually the main part that you can execute a lot of code. I mean, a lot of command in it. So, but why we need to execute a command? I mean, sometimes the image that you use does not have all of the packages or all of the libraries you want for your projects. So you need to install all of those libraries inside the script before using, for example, composer install or run PHP or anything like that. But uh, we can also skip, I mean, we can also make this uh, step simpler and uh, do not use any of this command, but then we, you need to create your own custom image. So how you can create your own custom e image is a different subject, which I can't really explain about it in this tutorial. But uh, definitely I will create a tutorial that you can basically see how you can create your custom image or how you can extend this, for example, this image to use uh, different libraries, additional libraries. 
So you will be basically using that new custom image instead of PHP 7.4 FPM. Anyway, so uh, as you can see, we are running uh, some commands which is necessary for our uh, uh, project to get run. So uh, the update is updating is a very simple command, but uh, we can I can show you how this is working. I mean, it's, it's really simple. Like this is the machine that we are using the PHP 7.4 PM, which is a Linux machine. So if you run it, it, it will run like this. Nothing really fancy. And then we have uh, installing some uh, zip and unzip library, pcov, we are using it for generating report uh, from our test. And then we have uh, Docker installing zip, we have some uh, git and curl, PD, PDO, Postgres. We are not using Postgres in the current project, but just uh, want to show you how we can actually use it. So I just I use it here. And then we have bcmath, we have libmcrypt, uh, and here is the command start that we actually want to uh, copy the EMV pipeline to EMV. Because we are not pushing EMV, uh, but we have EMV pipeline, and uh, we want to use that EMV pipeline, so we actually use cp and then .emv pipeline to .emv. So we will create the EMV file so our project could basically use the EMV. Then we are actually installing Composer and then, uh, not installing, but uh, yeah, installing the Composer. And then we use the Composer install to actually install uh, the packages inside the vendor folder. Then we basically, we are using SQLite and uh, we, here we create a database that is SQLite in the database folder. And then we run the PHP Arsene key generate, uh, the migrate, and the first command is a PHP CS. So PHP CS is a code sniffer. And then we're using the PHP unit. And as you can see here, we're using service Postgres. Postgres is a service that I can actually use it for my project. The only thing I need to do is go to the EMV pipeline and change the database from uh, SQLite to um, Postgres. But uh, I don't want to do it now. And then we have a definition, which in definition, I can actually define the environment variables for the PSQL. For example, if Postgres uh, wants to, I mean, wants to have a username, password, and database, I can define it here as an environment. And that's it. This is the whole thing of the Bitbucket pipeline. Actually, I have this file in my gist. I am sharing uh, the link so you can actually use it. There is another step, for example, if you have a step which you need to basically install the node and uh, you know, using the npm run or build, you can actually define a new step or even you can define it in this step with the script. Okay, so before of uh, anything, if we, create, if we have this repository in the Bitbucket, then the first thing Bitbucket will show us is to actually enable the pipeline. So let's say I have pushed this. Uh, let me see if I have pushed it or not. Yes. And if I now say, okay, enable the pipeline and uh, what will happen? It should actually show me the pipeline. Yes, exactly. Now it's actually show me the pipeline and uh, let me see. Yeah. Now if I click on it, you can see the build uh, also, you have only 50 minutes for free. So after 50 minutes, you need to basically buy or upgrade your plan in Bitbucket. Every step uh, for my project, it takes less than uh, two minutes. So I could have around 25 builds, but after that, uh, nothing I can do. I need to basically buy a new plan. Okay, so our pipeline, our pipeline pipeline is now starting to installing all of the commands and uh, we also have the Postgres here you can see this step this service sorry and yeah it's installing everything and let's wait for it until it installs and run all of the commands actually if it's uh, if it not fail then it should show a green um, uh, light here uh, but if it fails it should 
uh, show a red light. So yeah, Composer install. Yeah, okay. And yeah, PHP CS is okay. I think it, yeah, there is no error. PHP unit is also okay. So yeah, good. Just uh, about to forget, uh, actually there was another step I wanted to explain about it. It was the artifacts. Uh, as you can see here, uh, the artifacts is actually storing storage, vendor, public, and the EMB file. So basically you can actually download every, I mean each folder and see what's inside it. And then you can actually use it for debugging your code if your pipeline fail. So yeah. So we have actually pushed and uh, we have a status success and uh, that's it. Um, all of it, uh, it was, it was that, that's, that's, that's the whole thing. I hope you like this tutorial uh, and uh, definitely in the next tutorial I will uh, uh, write, I will make a new tutorial about how we can actually uh, create our own custom image and push it to Docker Hub and use that image in our Bit, Bitbucket pipeline. Uh, I hope you like this uh, video and I will see you in the next one. Thank you and bye bye.